In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I made my first short film out of film school, how I got to screen at international film festivals and win awards, and share some secrets on how you can do it too. My name is Emilio Miguel Torres, I'm a filmmaker, and on this channel, I share my creative work. And starting with this upload, I'll be making content about filmmaking and storytelling. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you pat that subscribe button. Just just give it a little pat and listen up because today we're gonna break down how I made my Alaskan sci-fi short film, The Ladder. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly suggest doing so. You can find the link to it in the description, but if you don't care about spoilers, we'll just keep it moving and get started. The concept. The Ladder is a sci-fi short film about an aging Alaskan fisherman named Arthur who lives in a world where a biotechnology company called Actolife has created a procedure where individuals can transplant their consciousness into 21-year-old synthetic bodies, effectively getting a second chance at life. In the film, Arthur struggles on whether or not he wants to go forward with his procedure, and the question of whether or not to do it only becomes more complicated when Arthur finds out that his son and daughter-in-law are pregnant and gets to see his friend Joe, who has done the procedure, interact in real life. Ultimately, the film is an introspective piece about an aging man who learns the value of accepting life as it is and, and growing old, and finding a sense of purpose when seemingly there's no more left. At this point, I've made several short films, and how I get into the concept for each individual one tends to differ from film to film, but in general, I feel my typical creative process starts with me thinking about my current circumstance, thinking about relationships in my life or experiences that I'm currently feeling, and I ask myself, why are those relationships interesting to me at the moment? Or why are these experiences that I'm experiencing interesting to me at the moment? And typically, if I do enough self-analysis, I can come up with some creative conclusions, and those those creative conclusions can act as the core of a story. In the latter, at the core of the film, of course, is the relationship between Arthur and his son, Ryan. I like to say that their relationship is an example of two men who have preconceived notions or expectations of how they should interact with each other. And really, the inspiration for that story came from summer 2019 when I started writing The Ladder. Summer 2019 was the first summer that I experienced as a college student back with my parents. And that was was a pretty pivotal moment for me as a young adult because it was my first time interacting with my parents as a grown adult who for most of the year was living on my own so suddenly a lot of the expectations from me to my parents and vice versa were kind of flipped on their head I knew I had to start writing to understand this relationship so a slight trauma dump there but that's an example of how you can take real life experiences you're having and how you can apply it to a story a lot of people say the cliche phrase write what you know which I think some people in terms as meaning like I can only write about the specific things that I've experienced in my life but that's not true you write what you know as in you write about what you know you have experiences in emotionally philosophically if you watch any of my films a lot of them start with some sort of core relationship or core experience that I'm feeling when I start writing the script and as I started to write it and I realized that the film was gonna be about a father accepting this new era of his life I had to create some sort of premise that would force a character to choose to grow old or to choose to move on to the next era of their life when the choice not to would be really great. And that's what makes the conflict interesting. That's how I came up with the sci-fi premise, writing. So in the earliest drafts of the ladder, I really didn't pressure myself to have like a fully formalized story. And all I started with was writing a conversation between Arthur and Ryan. Then that fall at film school, I was taking a short film screenwriting course. I decided to make my script for that class, The Ladder. And in that class, we would write a script, read it with our peers, get feedback, rewrite it, and so on and so forth. And that was really valuable for me. And I would say, if you're writing your script, even if you're not in film school, try to find at least one person to write with. Find a friend, they can even be online, find someone who's also writing a script, because if you can share your script with them and get feedback and hold each other accountable to actually finish your script, it can be very valuable when sometimes the hardest thing to get writing is just to start. So I wrote the script and made a more finished, finalized version. And at that point, I felt really good about the story and knew I wanted to make it in my hometown. But of course, I was gonna be in school for another semester. So me and my friend Toby, who is the cinematographer for the film, decided we wanted to shoot the film in May, 2020. As you can imagine, that didn't end up happening. I wanna highlight this part because I think it's a really important aspect of making a film. While the events of 2020 are not going to necessarily happen all the time, there are always going to be obstacles that come up while you're trying to make a film that are outside of your control. And as an independent filmmaker, you are a more effective filmmaker when you learn how to take obstacles as they come, pivot, 
it and figure out a solution so that you don't get stopped by things out of your control. When something happens that doesn't let you make your movie how you wanted to make it, don't just give up. Figure out something else to do with the project and in the long run, make it more meaningful for you and for your future audience. Due to the events of 2020 and social distancing, I decided to postpone the film indefinitely. I started freelancing as a filmmaker. I did my next school year online over Zoom. And in that class, I made Valor and Sacrifice, another short film that I'm very proud of. And in hindsight, I'm really glad I got that year of making other projects and making Valor and Sacrifice because if I hadn't, the version of the ladder that we would have made in 2020 would have been not nearly as good as the version we made in 2021 because I gave myself the whole year to get better as a filmmaker and I rewrote the script over that year to make it even stronger. Eventually, we found out we were gonna be able to make the film in 2021, July, after I graduated film school over Zoom. And once we had a target of when we wanted to shoot the film, at that point, I had realized that if I really wanted to make this film no longer as a student on my own, I was gonna need a substantial budget. After a year of making projects and making my thesis film at NYU, I really thought I had the skill set to make a festival quality short film with a substantial film budget. But in case you haven't realized yet, I was a broke college student. I did not have any money. My parents are not rich. I do not have savings to make this film happen. I have never had $20,000 in liquid cash in my life, but I knew I wanted to make the movie in a specific way. And most importantly, I wanted to pay the people who worked on my film. And so in the $20,000 budget breakdown, the biggest percentage is crew wages, but it went into other aspects like production, festivals, post-production, insurance, equipment, food, housing, travel, transportation, lenses, buying hard drives. When I knew that the film was gonna be a substantial budget, I was feeling really stuck because at that point I had not made a film for more than $1,000. I had no idea how to even start budgeting a film at that high of a level of a cost. I reached out to a network of student filmmakers that I had on Facebook and I was asking if anyone had experience as a producer working with a budget of above 15,000. And I got in contact with Alex Hellman who ended up being the producer for the latter. She also edited the film and together we created a proposed shooting schedule, created a line by line budget that would be associated with that. Once we had a budget that made sense, we had a timeline that made sense, it was time to choose our platform. The platform that we did for crowdfunding was Seed and Spark and they were great partners in making this film a reality, I highly suggest them if you're looking into crowdfunding for your short film. Now granted, if you're earlier in short filmmaking, you do not need to do a crowdfunding campaign to make your movie, but it's a very effective way to build an audience and to get the funds you need to make a movie. And for my film, I knew that I had the right audience to get enough money to make the film. I, I knew it, I believed it. In just 10 days from launching our crowdfunding campaign, we raised our goal for the ladder, which meant we got to make our film. Now I could go into detail about all the things that we did to be successful on that crowdfunding campaign, how we successfully raised $15,000 in 10 days, but that could be a whole other video in itself. So if you're interested in seeing a more in-depth video about crowdfunding, what we did and how you can replicate the process, comment down below. And if enough of you want to see that, I'll be sure to make a video about crowdfunding in the future. Pre-production. First, we attached cast and crew. The cast are all local catch can actors. That was more just reaching out to people that I knew, sending them the script, asking them if they're interested. Arthur, who's played by Keith Smith, was a role that I knew I wanted Keith Smith to play. He was a mentor for me when I was younger and being able to direct him in that role was really awesome and he ended up winning an award for his performance as Arthur. The crew were some of my best friends from film school as well as Ketchikan local filmmakers that I knew would be great additions to our crew. Once we knew our target dates to shoot, what days we were shooting, where we were going to be shooting, we could start planning travel, transportation, where we were going to house everyone, how we were going to feed everyone and thanks to the budget that we got with the crowdfunding campaign, we got to afford everything we needed. At this stage, I start shot listing the film which means I'm taking my script, I'm imagining how I want to shoot it, and I start breaking it down shot by shot. Also during this pre-production phase, I did rehearsals over Zoom with the actors, and this was the most fun part for me, production. So like I said, we produced this film in July of 2021. We flew all of our cast and crew to Ketchikan and shot it over the course of four days. Production all in all went pretty smoothly. We had planned everything in advance uh, with my producer, my assistant director, another producer, Maggie Berry, who's also my girlfriend. She helped us stay on top of scheduling, timing, where people needed to be when and all in all production went pretty smoothly and in fact we even had some fun in certain scenes to be able to play a little which I don't always have the luxury to do on set for example in the dinner scene for the latter we had enough time that we were able to shoot it how I wrote the scene but also we were able to try new things that ended up making the cut for example originally in the film after they have their fight Ryan and Emily storm off 
But if you watch the released version of the latter, Ryan stops by Arthur, puts his hand on his shoulder, kind of letting him know like, hey dad, I still love you, and then walks off to be with his wife. That idea, that little creative idea came from one of my crew members, Jackson Yeomans. We did a take that was great, which was exactly how the script was written. And then he said to me, hey Amelia, what if you did this? We tried it, it worked great, and it made the final cut. When you're really well prepared and you plan your shoot, you have more time on set to try some of those more creative on the fly things. I always say you want to sweat and prep so you don't bleed on set. Submitting to festivals. If you don't know, one of the most popular ways to submit to film festivals for any indie filmmaker is a website called Film Freeway. If you ever did the Common App in high school, it's kind of like that. Post your film up there, and then they have a whole catalog of film festivals from around the world with various costs and information, and you apply to them by certain deadlines, and you wait to hear back. But it's great because it's one platform where you can submit to all of them. For all my films, I've used Film Freeway to submit them to film festivals. We had this film that I was really proud of. I really wanted to make a splash, so we submitted to festivals. The latter did not have the biggest splash in the film festival market that I wanted it to have. But using Film Freeway, submitting to festivals, we did get into six. And of those six film festivals, we won awards at two of them. We won the Critics' Choice Award for Best Sci-Fi Short at the Scion Film Festival, and Keith Smith won Best Actor at the Oregon Short Film Festival. We got to premiere the film at the Anchorage International Film Festival, which is the biggest film festival in Alaska. So it was really cool to have an Alaskan-made film premiere at an Alaskan festival. And from there, it went to different festivals around the country. In total, we had six. We screened in multiple states and after about a year of touring those film festivals we completed our festival run and when the festival run was completed I had decided I wanted to release the film but before I could release the film I wanted to make sure that the next stage of the process was all ready to go the latter for me was always a proof of concept for a bigger feature film that I've always wanted to make and so before I released the film I wrote the entire feature screenplay of the latter it was my first time writing a full-length feature screenplay and I'm actually really proud of it and right now in the background with all the other creative projects I have going on. I'm actively pursuing making that feature film. We're looking for investors. If you're interested in learning more about that feature film, or if you're interested in becoming an investor in the film, please email me. My email is in the description. Um, I'd love to share that with you. But anyway, we held a Catch Ken premiere where I premiered the film. And shortly after that, we released it on YouTube for everyone to see. And in less than three months from releasing the film, the latter has gotten over 100,000 views. It's been really exciting to see that the film is engaging with audiences, and it just makes me more excited to release my next short film to you all. There's actually more exciting news coming about the latter, but I can't share everything. So for now, I will just say thank you to everyone who's checked out the film. If you have any questions about the film, feel free to comment down below. I'll try to answer as many as possible. To conclude this video, that was how I made my award-winning short film, The Ladder. How I came up with the concept, how I wrote a script for it, how it got postponed due to certain events in 2020, how I was able to do a crowdfunding campaign, how I sent all my friends to my hometown and made a film there, and how I got into international film festivals and won awards. If you have any questions about specific steps of the process of making the ladder, please comment them down below and I'll try my best to answer any and every single one. But if I think it should be a longer form video, I may make a video in the future to explain that part of it. If you made it to the end of this video, please like this video to let me know you enjoyed it. I am no expert in filmmaking. All I can share is my personal experience as an artist, but I'm still very excited to continue uploading videos to this YouTube channel, telling you about filmmaking and storytelling so that we can all grow as storytellers together. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.